21 minutes past five. If you've recently had a parking ticket, you may want to listen to this. The local government ombudsman for England says local councils are hitting motorists with unnecessary parking fines and failing to explain their right to challenge tickets, aye, aye. The watchdog also found that all too often appeals are being rejected without any proper consideration or explanation. Well, let's talk to Jeanette Miller. Jeanette is from the Association of Motor Offence Lawyers and Managing Director at Jeffrey Miller Solicitors. Jeanette, good afternoon to you. Hi there. I know, I know we've spoken to plenty of people on the show who feel that motorists are constantly being used as, as cash cows, but what's going on here? Well, this Ombudsman report indicates that, um, in their view, the, the, the process of information being passed to the motorist is what is unfair. But it, it, in my opinion, I, I don't think it stops there, really. The information, even when it is outlined, is really quite complicated. If you look online at various guides on what to do if you want to challenge a parking ticket, um, there are so many things you need to establish in terms of what type of ticket it is, whether it's a local authority matter or whether it's a private parking matter. And then the appeals process itself, the way you challenge it, there's an informal challenge followed up by a, a formal challenge, whether you send off payment in, so you can take advantage of a 50% discount or not. And it, it is a real minefield for the motorist who, more often than not, has nobody really to fight their corner because it's not worthwhile engaging a lawyer for something like this, bearing in mind lawyers' fees are probably going to far outweigh whatever the, the, the parking notice fine was going to be in the first place. So I think it, it, it certainly is an unfair situation for the motorist. I'm not sure the recommendations the Ombudsman made are going to make it any fairer. See, most parking tickets, the vast majority, will be issued in good faith because people will be a bit cheeky and parked where they shouldn't, and they know they shouldn't. You can't have people complaining about every ticket they get. But it just seems that everything is stacked every time. Everything is stacked against the motorists. Even the signs sometimes, Jeanette, that you're trying to decipher whether you can park there legally or not, it's baffling. Well, I think if there is ambiguity, if there is something that isn't clear in terms of signage or um, the, the rules that, that should be followed, that certainly could form the basis of a valid challenge. So it's really important to take photographs if you're parking somewhere and, and you think you're not sure, but you think you're okay, and perhaps later on a, a notice comes to you through the post or you, you return to your vehicle and, and there's a notice on there. Um, but yeah, it, it is something that I think there's this inherent perception of unfairness. And unfortunately, if you are going to challenge something, there is a laborious process to follow. So I think the vast majority of people tend to think it's not worth it, even if they think they've got a valid challenge. I mean, even those parking tickets, for example, where, you know, you, well, all parking tickets, they give you a chance, if you pay within a certain time, to reduce it. By 50. it the onus is, they kind of put pressure on you because you think, oh, I don't want it to be 100 quid, I'd rather pay 50 quid now and get it over and done exactly. with. Exactly, and that's one of the things that the report's picked up upon, where somebody has sent off a cheque and made a challenge, wanting to sort of hedge their bets, I suppose. But because of the ambiguity, you can't do both, really. If you're going to challenge a, a notice, then you need to do that rather than sending payment. Or the, the, the local authority will treat that payment as being yeah. accepting of the, of the notice. Jeanette, I must get this off my chest, because yesterday I took my wife to get her phones broken. We went in the afternoon to... to it, was a, it was a council-run car park. I'm not going to say where it was. But you, you go and you pay on exit. So when you, when you leave... You, you put in the registration number of your car, and it comes up with a fee. You pay. Well, what it doesn't tell you on that machine is that there's another sign saying Sunday parking is free. Mm -hmm. so you've got all these people paying to park. And the, the, this local council doesn't say that you can park for free on the machine. It does say on the board, but the machine says pay £2.20. And people, I see people paying, and you don't have to pay. It's free. Well, that, that just does sound wrong, doesn't it? It should be something that automatically rejects your money, and they, they should have it set up. No, way, they'll but... take your money. That's the problem. <laughs> they take, yeah, it's always stacked. Again, I know people park illegally, and they sh we should be punished. But sometimes it's, it's, it should be fair, not stacked in just one direction. And I, I think that's what the ombudsman's um, sort of picked up upon. There is this sort of computer says no mentality when it comes to looking at, or, or not looking at, as it seems to be, the challenges that are made. So that there are some really quite ridiculous examples given. Um, you know, people who who have parked in a certain position because of trying to get a disabled person. Um, access to a building, that kind of thing. And then there does need to be a bit more of a common sense approach to the challenges that are made. Jeanette, nice talking to you. Thank you. Jeanette Miller from the Association of Motor Offence Lawyers and Managing Director at Geoffrey Miller Solicitors. Cheeky councils, you can imagine that.